find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the floor. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show 120 on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, live from um, not the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, a uh, wonderful wonderful airbnb here actually in san diego california uh rocking the uh the the, the, the blue snowball and, and and an interesting lighting um duct tape solution i have going on over here uh but with me uh, i'm a video producer of course uh with uh, uh iwc rwa indie wrestling.us sorgatron media that's my angle on wrestling and podcaster for well over 10 years but my buddy here Eamon payton in san antonio texas the voice of inspire pro wrestling uh how you doing man i'm doing fantastic and you may have show on location for the believe the first time ever uh, uh, well, yeah, on one end, I mean, you know, <laughs> certain, certain things out well, here the, the kind hub. of the, the get us to come out here a little bit early when we came out here for work and, uh, that we can't talk about too much on the show. Uh, but, uh, I just going to say the future of Lucha Underground looks very, very bright and dark at the same time. But, that could not be a spoiler. It's not, a, well, I mean, there's a lot of death in the show. Not that I saw death, but, but I might see death but so you're saying too much i probably am saying too much i oh, i hate indie guys. uh but anyways uh no this is the indie mayhem show we talk with indie wrestlers we talk about indie wrestling from guys that work around indie wrestling uh, as much as you can without taking a bump uh so uh we have a lot of fun with it and we hope you guys can join us in the indie conversation um uh thanks to hey i had a random email a guy was telling me about indie wrestling that he likes uh so please do that and you can do that too at good times at wrestling show.com or the phone number at 412-206-WMS0 uh let us know any guests you think we should have if we have any announced guests coming up let us know any questions um and 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 uh or just tell us you know what indie wrestling you guys are checking out what you like and uh in and, and the like um and I'm blanking on the rest of the stuff because it's weird and I'm in San Diego and I don't know what time it is and it's still light outside. And that's so unusual for this. But um, anyways, uh, but uh, uh, we have some guests this week, of course, uh, um, uh, back at in Clearfield, PA, uh, Cage Combat 2 up there for the International Wrestling Cartel. I caught up with the fraternity, their current IWC Tag Team Champions. Um, a little different kind of interview than what we typically do here on the show. Uh, we had a good time with them. And, uh, well, let's go and kick to that, and we'll be right back after that with uh, some more indie wrestling talk. Hey guys, we're up here in Clearfield, PA. Mike Sorg, I just tossed myself, I'm sure, on the show. Uh, but we're here with the fraternity. That's right. Trent Gibson. And two frat Channing Decker. There you go. These guys have been tearing it up um, on former IWC tag champions as of me. Well, well let's oh, not. Former. We don't got to get into the whole former who has, past. Who has it now? Who doesn't have it now? I don't know who's did dating he who. or didn't he? Either way, we're here in Clearfield. It's combat. Uh, it's cage combat two here in Clearfield. You're got you. You got a cage match tonight. It's a and UFC event. It's a, <laughs> we could MMA, it could be. We could get that martial one. arts. Yeah. I heard Conor McGregor retired. Well, I don't think we're facing him tonight. There you go. You have uh, Remy LeVay and Keith Hott, no strangers to the Indie Mayhem show. Okay. All right. Good to know. I guess. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but you guys, um, I, I understand this is your first cage match individually as a team all together, right? Well, the funny thing with that is that all, uh, you know, in the first few years of college, I danced in a cage at a bar for oh, okay. to make ends. Well, not so much to make ends meet as it was just it my was own pleasure. It was, it was a pleasure-based was... dance. Yeah, I danced in a cage. So I'm not any stranger to a cage, for sure. It depends, I mean, now there's four guys in the cage. That's... That's a new twist, I guess. Well, in, in college, things happen. So who's to say we're what, ready four, for any five guys, girls, whatever. We're ready. I don't care. Well, so how did um, how did you guys uh, get into uh, wrestling in general? Like, what were your kind of first memories of getting into wrestling? First memories? I'm I'm having so many memories of this cage now. That's all I can think about. Are you yeah, kidding me? Tough. First memories. I, I'm thinking back to. Uh, Dick, uh, the bruiser. Dick the Bruiser. <laughs> and a guy named Eddie Valhoun. And uh, Hairpiece Station. Hairpiece Station. One of the, when you look at the 1920s, which I think 
mm. one of the best eras. That's my favorite That's era. That's where it all began. Because I watch, I actually, they didn't film it back then, they did drawings. And right. similar so, to this podcast, a lot of it was audio. You had to listen intently to know what was going yes. on inside the square. Well, it was five sides back then. The funny thing is, you can't say for sure that they even existed. Right. Was it, a, was it one of those fiction shows? They did like a... I think a, it was, because there was one, dramas? there was a thing that became a whole alien thing. Maybe we're in the, maybe we don't, I don't even know if we actually watched wrestling now that you... <sighs> Where are we? Clearfield, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, geez, for tonight, I guess. News to me, I guess. There's that. There's that. <laughs> but you guys, uh, how did you guys come together uh, uh, together as the fraternity, as this tag team? Well, you're looking at the fraternity. Mm. You ever been to college before? I don't think you have. I went to an art school. Oh, I'm sorry to hear so, that. This is this is an experience. Now, my wife's more of a college person. She's telling me about the, uh, the sorority and the dorms the other uh, the other night, and I feel that she kind of can relate to you guys a little well, bit more. You don't have to tell us about your wife. We we've we're we well versed with your wife. We've got we've had a few nights with her. I believe I've had more than a few unmentionable nights. Okay, so, that's all I'm going to say about that. But. But uh, from that, <laughs> but no, but no, how did you guys get hooked up uh, together as a team? Well, you're looking at two uh, predominantly white, clean cut. Yep. Uh, studious. Studious. Mm -hmm. uh, collegial. Collegial. Cage dancing. Evervescent. Ever, evervescent. Mm -hmm. uh, young males. Young. And uh, you look at, you know, when we started off, we're looking at tag team names. Okay. New Age Outlaws, that's taken. You look at other names like uh, Rock and Roll Express, it's taken. I, I remember when I went into the room, I said, I finally got it. It's the Usos. The Usos. And what happened on that, that Raw? Well, the Raw, the Usos come out. The Usos that come was... out. So it's like you look at the Rolodex of names and what's left. And the dancing, too. I mean, that was obviously going to come over from the cage. Well, you know, you look at our rich history of dance, and it starts with our uh, Caucasian roots. For them, it was their Samoan. But for us, you know, you look at dances that were popular in the 80s amongst white people. You look at, you know, with the passing of Prince, a lot of his music was very, you know, we, you know, in our house, uh, people were dancing to Purple Rain a lot. I like to just put this out for the whole expose. Okay. This is a docu documentary sure docuze docuze docu docu, docu podcast it's a docu shoot because i'm pretty sure i came up with the cabbage patch i'll tell you that right now oh there you go you've heard it here first Put that on the headline okay yeah, cabbage patch fraternity <laughs> all right you guys have been here with uh, iwc for about a year i think what well, you started uh whether we were talking you guys started at meadville in the battle royal right yes. that was uh i was uh, in that battle royal for maybe what was it four five seconds five seconds and that's all you if you do it right you only have to be in there that long. That's right. right. You end up in the record books for all the right reasons. Yes. You were in the Ric Flair Invitational with Space Monkey. Wow. Well, and, uh, you know, I have heard some conflicting stories about his uh, mortality. Is he alive? I believe he's passed. He? Really? Yeah. R.I.P. Space Monkey. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. He passed on to the next planet. He's just moving on. I, I, think, he's, I think he's working on the Indies and Mars now. You took that in a weird way. Yeah. I, oh, I, We're well, talking about a man's life here. Well, a monkey's <laughs> life. Well, yeah. Uh, well, it's been a rough week for, for Between Prince and China. I mean, um, come on. That, that's the, that's the, that's, that was actually her DVD, I believe, Between Prince and China. There we go. There we go. All righty. But how's it been your time in uh, IWC? Obviously, you've had the tag titles here uh, for a little bit, uh, for a spell, and, uh, and, 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 and you've gotten a pretty good reaction from people. Well, you look at our time in IWC, and the first thing that comes to mind is outrageous success. That's, that's two words, but if you put a dash there, success. outrageous success. So it's hard to have a bad time when you're being so successful. I think we talked about that in the car on the way here and stuff like that. You yeah, know, like, uh, it was literally a five-hour discussion about outrageous, outrageous success. success. And I think when you look at you know the, all the best of DVDs over there on the merch table, the AJ Styles best of, CM Punk best of, when, the, when they come up with the fraternity best of, it's going to be called the fraternity outrageous success. It's true. And the issue with the DVD is we... They say you go on the DVD sizes, you know the whole thing. They say you get 10 matches on it. Well, okay, well, let's put my first 10 matches on it. Now we need another DVD. Yeah, let's have Broadways and then, you know. The, yeah, volume 2, Outrageous <laughs> Success The two. next 10 matches. See, every match has been on the best of at this point. Mm -hmm. There's been no weak ones. It's all best of. That's true. Tonight is going to be, I think it's at volume 64. First time in a cage. There you go. First time in a cage, my debut album. That's the title of the, the DVD. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, to close this up, first of all, what are you guys watching? What are you guys paying attention to out there? Getting any tips from or just kind of digging in the pro wrestling world right now? Well, we got the network. 
We got the network. <laughs> the food network. Yeah, the food. Okay. So, you know, you look back and watch all the old stuff. Okay, you watch Emerald Lagasse. You look at the way he went, you, what he brought to the table. Charisma. Charisma. Yeah. Bam. Bam. You know? See, it's the catchphrases. Mm -hmm. And that's, you go back, that's where The Rock got his catchphrases from Emerald. Emerald. Okay, okay. You know, and I think back then he was going as Emerald. Emerald Lagasse, he was working a sequin gimmick. Yeah, it was so, green, the Wizard know, of Oz type thing. It was, it was in the 80s, it was different. Things were different. But that's when you have the network, the Food Network, it's easy to go back in time and see all those classics. So that's, in short, where we're getting our inspiration from. All right. And what's the what's the best and the worst thing about uh, being in indie wrestling uh, at the times you guys have done? Are we talking about other than this interview? Uh, this yeah, let's, let's, let's not count this interview right. at all. Perhaps. No. If I do a worst of DVD, uh, the, or, the photo is going to be, this, it's going to look this, like, like us smiling hey. together. Outrageous hey. displeasure. <laughs> outrageous displeasure. You could title it that. Uh -huh. I always get, this is the way the interviews usually go in Clearfield. I don't know why. I don't, you know? It doesn't say something about us. No. We're looking yeah, at you. you the nobody you nobody wants to do a Trump impression or something. That worked last We are the variables. But I, I can tell you this much. that I'll tell you this. If you watch this podcast and listen regularly, we're going to win again. Okay? The podcast is going to win again. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. There are awards for best interview at the end of the year. We call them the Mayhemies. So. The Mayhemies. The okay, Mayhemies. well, you look at things like this. Okay, you look at awards that we've won in the past. Tag team titles. We built great tag team championships. Okay, we're we, builders. We're builders. Okay, I know a lot of great builders. Just like we're going to build a Mayhemi by the end of this interview. It's going to be huge. You're huge going to love mayhem. it. We're going to win that. And you're going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> the Trump streak <laughs> survives. I, I think that's the best answer I'm going to get out of these guys. Thank you so much. Where are you guys? We're getting played off apparently here hey, by, the, by, like by, by another tag team. Because fraternity <laughs> is eternity. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Hey, you're looking at the Trent Gibson and the Channing Decker. And you can find me in your wife's bedroom. Oh, come on. We're going to play it off. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Good luck in the cage tonight. Back to the studio. That was fun. I'll tell you. It has brought my wife and I closer together because it has helped me um, embrace my love of professional wrestling and that has helped my wife embrace her love of professional wrestling and together as we embrace our love of professional wrestling we have something that we can share together and it makes us a better married couple. Thanks to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Jennifer and I have started our own foundation, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. So far only the Wrestling Mayhem Show has been worthy of our contributions, but perhaps we'll find another decent podcast someday. And we're back, and that was in our video from our 10-year anniversary over at Looking for Group Pittsburgh. We'll actually be back there if you're in the Pittsburgh area uh, coming up here on, I believe, June 2nd. Uh, you can find out uh, info on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be going back for the six-year anniversary for Awesome Cast. I think it's officially going to be episode 301. So come on down if you're in the Pittsburgh area and uh, and uh, play some video games, uh, uh, listen to us talking about technology and, and the like. Uh, but anyways, Eamon, so I'm out in California. And I'm, I'm doing these trips, right? And and I was, remember we there was that poster we found when I was in Tennessee. Yes, you you remember fondly, I'm sure. How can I forget? <laughs> yes, it was uh, the Jeff Jarrow one, and then we're trying to just figure out who these people were and everything. So I I wanted to I'm trying to do my due diligence a little bit more in advance and uh, figure out you know what wrestling's in the area, what can I check out, what's going to happen to fall into the weekends where I'm in these other towns because I have you know this here in California this weekend, um, and of course coming up in in actually Rochester, New York in June. Uh, so I looked into stuff, and it looks like I am fortunate enough that uh, uh, at least 20 minutes or so from wherever I'm staying. I think in both locations, uh, there's going to be wrestling. And I'm going to be able to check out wrestling in a whole different area in 
both are promotions I don't think I've heard of. And especially out here in California, I think it's going to be a very, very different experience <laughs> from the looks <laughs> of things. And I think, I don't know if you've seen the one that I posted over on the, on the Facebook group, um, but it's going to be very, very curious. Um, but I was really interested because uh, again, we were at, we were at the Lucha Underground tapings and, and Alex knows, you know, Alex knows the scene out here. Our friend Power to the Smarks, um, um, Occupy Pro Wrestling, uh, check out the podcast and everything. I'm actually going to make an appearance apparently on it in the near future. Uh, uh, thing we recorded at at the other Airbnb in 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 uh, Boyle Heights, uh, mm-hmm. but um, but there's a a site I don't know if you've heard of this SoCal Underground. It's basically a site about indie wrestling in Southern California, mm-hmm. and it was a really cool resource. And I think is going to uh, you know anytime I get I get uh, out here, um, I think it's going to be really really helpful to. To, to I, th- I don't know is it underground yeah no this is something else this is mushroom head maybe it's uncensored so cal uncensored um but anyways it, yeah it's it's got a calendar it's got everything in southern california it's got google map links to everything, uh, which was really, really helpful because I was able to just go to Google Maps and, and just plug in the address, you know, to my uh, hotel room. And, of course, like, hey, there's a Pro Wrestling Gorilla show this weekend that I'll completely never be able to go to or afford. Um, <laughs> but, but there's a lot out here. Even even as it was, as I was walking around, like there was a Lucha, like a, just a Lucha show, like apparently last Sunday. Um, but it was so weird because it had like the park, it had a um, um, blue demon and like one other like lucha guy that I've seen before, mm-hmm. and uh, but it didn't have an address. It just had a phone number. <laughs> that was really weird, and I was like, well, maybe this is a weird thing for like lucha underground. But I looked at, it, I was like, none of those guys were in lucha underground. Like I know, I know blue demon used to be, right? right? But I was like, it, it so it's some other lucha show. That was happening on the same day as the tapings. Uh, so I thought that was really, really curious. Um, but aside from that, so what did I find? I'm hoping to report back on this and and uh, have something. Um, and again, this is this is all dependent on, on work. I might get stuck uh, filming something. But if not, I'm going to be going down to, uh, what is this, Sun, Sun Valley, California, uh, for a night of ultraviolet, and I just confessed over on Wrestling Mayhem show, by the way, about how much I'm not really into death matches these days. <laughs> but it's wrestling, <laughs> so true. so let's check this out. Um, and I gotta say, um, as far as identifiable and everything, I think um, we have a little bit better. There's the here's the poster in the poster over on SoCal Uncensored. Um, XWW Pro Wrestling. Not sure what that stands for. Uh, and nobody ever is. We're going to have X Deathmax Exorcist Flaming Light Tubes Freak Show. That's a guy's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've heard. Uh... I know, like, like I'm like you, so I, I know very little of, like, Deathmatch. I know of the name, like, Freak Show, and, like, like yeah, it's, uh, uh, that kind of style is very, very much foreign to me. So, yeah, I, I definitely, looks interesting, to say the least. And a Sun Valley street fight against uh, Chris Senzenzo. Uh, Garza, where you had to help me out. I'm not even going to say the other guy's name. His name's Ruben. Basius. Okay, that's easy. Um, but uh, it, it, but so I'm going to check this out. It's ten bucks. It's like eight thirty a night. Why not? Um, and I think that's important to to. Uh, I've said here. I'm going to try to find these things, and and I think it's important to to take those opportunities, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I think Empire Pro Wrestling was the one I found. And it's actually they don't have anything announced for their their June date because I think the May just just past this past weekend mm-hmm. um but there's a lot of faces familiar on it like like rj city and and jock sampson are actually were actually on that so hopefully some of those guys are booked for uh the one that i intend to go to and everything so um but generally like there's a, i i didn't think that there was going to be a lot of wrestling in california like you don't hear about a lot out of here out here right uh you hear about of course you know the pro wrestling gorilla and the blue underground taping out of here and and presumably a lot of local-ish guys kind of pop up in that too right or at least like i know like triple a guys and everything you know it makes sense for the area and, and what they're doing um 
but I was really surprised at, at the number. Like, I, I don't know if you're able to pull this up over there on your site, uh, mm. uh, so dot com. Um, I feel like I, I like I I want something like this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like not not just like I, maybe Texas could have something like this. Maybe you do have something like this. But I want something like this that's like searchable, right? Um, yeah, I know it, Texas it, used to have one. It hasn't it hasn't been updated recently. Um, right, but you know, somebody uh, has to dedicate to something like this, right? Yeah. Um, in and I mean, even if it's just like a mass one where you can sort via like location, like I think that would be really cool. Like uh, the idea that we're like, oh, I'm going to be in such and such place, like what's close by? You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and now, don't get me wrong. Like, like Southern California is a huge, huge place. I mean, you're you're talking like there could be something like five hours away or something like that. Right. Um, so I mean, you, you're sitting there like some of those some of those days, like there's four or five shows happening at once. Right. But if you got to look this up, like like the, well here, like uh, like one in Sun Valley, which is like northern LA, and then there's Anaheim, which is in the south. Uh, Montebello, I think, it was a bit out there too. Uh, Palms, California. I don't know where that is. Uh, so you know, there's an East LA happening on, on, on the Sunday over here. Um, there's a TV taping somebody's doing over here for CWFH in Port Huneme. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Port Huneme is going to be your, uh, your version of Meadville. <laughs> Meadville. Meadville. Hey, you know. Uh, localization, uh, but other than that, I, I, but I'm looking forward to it, and I like seeing something like this. And, and I wish there was something that that if somebody's traveling, you know, like 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 I'm I'm doing here and saying, you know, hey, I'm dropping off in Texas. What's around? I just want to see some wrestling. You know, mm-hmm. you have that with bands. You have that with everything else. Um, so there's my pitch to web developers out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a great concept. I, I really think that's something that has some could have some legs, honestly. Yeah, and obviously they do they do fairly well um, on this site. It was it was the thing I heard about. Uh, just just you know, uh, in general, they have about a thousand likes. That's not bad. So um, I mean, I, Texas has kind of the same thing. I mean, in case you know, Texas is a huge area. We can do one that's like uh, Pennsylvania wrestling if you wanted to. But I think you would be better served. Like you could see a um, New England or 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 northeastern wrestling thing mm-hmm. right i mean because oh. i mean how many times have you know you've been with us we traveled to cleveland for shows there i know there were people traveling from harrisburg to pittsburgh for iwc at one point uh, uh you know or or how many times have we gone to new jersey or 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 uh philadelphia from across the state six hours away i mean that's that is reachable for somebody that wants to catch certain indie wrestling or something different or maybe that's within the circle of where they travel and i think that's something that could be served to help uh expose these things you know it's not just the localized things you can like like the indies could really kind of capture travelers as well so you know um but other than that uh yeah, that's all I got for indie wrestling this week. <laughs> uh, anything going on in your neck of the woods? I know you guys have some uh, stuff going on with the Inspire Pro Wrestling. Um, we have, oh, you know what we can talk about? Now, we just became that part. Um, uh, <laughs> RWA is doing something different, different this week. Uh, our friends at rwalive.com. Uh, I'm not going to be there, obviously. I'm out here in California. Our friend's going to be in Sorgatron Media. We'll be in attendance. Also, I think delivering the bir- the, the wedding cake as well. Uh, but uh, RWA, it's not loading. Um, they're having a wedding. Jesse Bell Smothers and Shane Andrews, and, and yeah, Jesse Bell, Tracy Smothers' daughter. Um, they're ha- and, and you're like, oh, they're having a you know whatever a, a you know wedding, like Macho and Elizabeth did, right? Um, from what I understand, this is like there is a marriage license involved. Jesus. So, <laughs> and there's Ava's reaction. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, but but that's happening, and it's happening at West Newton, uh, little old West Newton. Uh, so it's going to be really, really kind of interesting to see how that comes out. Of course, I'm going to get see it in post, um, of course. But um, but still, it, it it it's really interesting to see. Um, um, something different 
uh, something like this. And and I, it sounds like it's not going to be the typical uh, wedding, you know. Jake the Snake's going to show up. I don't know. Jake the Snake could show up, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it is indie wrestling, right? <laughs> um, so uh, looking forward to that. And other than that, um, I, I also wanted to call out, because there is a big return happening at this one. Um, if you remember one uh, Mickey Knuckles mm. had a pretty crazy street fight uh, with a guy in this in a, about last year or a year before, was it? Uh, she's back. She's actually making her return. She's coming out of retirement for this. Our friend G River is coming back. Uh, so I uh, well, so want to give a shout out for that. Hey, there's Colby Carino. He was a uh, part of the show a little bit ago. And of course, in a couple of weeks, they're actually going to be uh, having Global Force Wrestling up in the Pittsburgh area as well. So we'll get our taste of that. Hey, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get Damian Sandell on that show too. Hey, that'd, yeah, be, yeah. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. It's like June 3rd. So um, shout out to them, rwalive.com. And I'm not sure what else is actually in the works uh, for matches on this one. Uh, I just, I just, I'm sorry, I just can't recall at the moment. So, uh, other than that, um, uh, I don't know. What do you think about this? Because we were talking about match types over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. That was, it was actually your kind of brainchild. But I think you know, we talk also a lot about uh, these groups kind of sticking out, whether it be through YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, you know, do do you see like kind of are we running out of ways for these shows to to stick out? Much like we were running out of ways to find new matches that really worked. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think this is a great way to stick out. I mean, the, I think when it comes to indie wrestling, I think people have their idea of what works in indie wrestling, and they kind of stick to that. And there's, in a way, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think they're, I, it's it's much different than marketing towards like a television product as opposed to marketing towards like a what can draw a crowd. Obviously, I mean, if you're still drawing crowds with you know your, you know you know, five-star quality matches or whatever it is that's drawing your crowds. I mean, that's, if that's working for you, that's working. But I do like the idea of, you know, trying to do something a bit different. I think, when I think of that, I think a lot about uh, AIW because they'll be the guys that kind of book people that you wouldn't traditionally see get booked places. You know, you, you would have, like, like they have the top-level, like, independent wrestling talent, but then they'll also randomly decide to book, like, um, uh, Colonel Robert Parker one month. Do a book. Um, <laughs> Terry Funk to show up and punch a guy. Yeah, just to do something. Uh, I know Hornswoggle is going to be at the JT Lady Invitational just because, you know. In a match, like, I believe. In a match? I, I think he's just making an appearance. Oh, is he? I, I, I just presumed when I, when I saw it, it was like he's part of it, you know. Yeah, but I mean, stuff like that. Like, you know, you know, stuff that's not necessarily like, oh, you're there to, you know, put on a five-star match, you know. Kind of, oh, you're there because you're a weird name. So if somebody sees you as being a weird name on a card, people will go, oh, I kind of got to see that. You know what I mean? Or Virgil randomly showing up unannounced to uh, press the reset button. Yeah, same thing. Re- I mean, Reloaded 2.0, available on IndieWrestling.us. There's a level of like, the, I, it's kind of like almost a level of embracing that whole idea of like, Wrestling fans looking at something like that and being like, this could be amazing or it could be a car crash. But I kind of want to see the car crash too. Yeah, and it, like I'll, I'll pay my $15 or, or to see the car car crash in person, right? So, um, yeah, no, no, I, I think you're completely right. And, 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 and as far as gimmickiness, you know, I think I think the, the Reloaded I was just kind of joking about, I think it really hits a, hits a mark on that. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of excitement and... and uh, even I, you know, I'll talk about the guys involved in that. It was like, it, it was a good way for a new promoter to say, Hey, we're going to mix things up. And the first thing he did was have Virgil unannounced, come out and wrestle a match. Yeah. Quote, wrestle a match. Right. Um, and, and that unpredictability. And I think that's been, and, and I think it's kind of hard when you say, Hey, all the championship matches, you don't know who people are going to face. But then you you do deliver on something like that, you know, because yeah. Reloaded had the comeback of a friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco, which if you're a fan of IWC, you know the story between DeMarco and, and DJ Z, Shima Zion, right? Yeah. Um, and on top of that, they delivered, you know, delivered so much that they even surprised the promoter, I believe. Uh, but uh, or, or you have Billy Gunn and, and Dylan Bostic, you know, uh, or you have... Um, 
knocked yourself four away match with Chris LaRusso and three three people you don't know and three people that you've never seen before if you're only an IWC fan. I didn't know who any of these people were, uh, except for, oh, actually, Alex Daniels was making a comeback, right? Um, and he's a guy that's making a splash in AIW. Uh, but they all delivered. They all mm-hmm. absolutely delivered on stuff like that. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a lot of comebacks. Uh, Brian Bowers came back against Andrew Palace, you know, like names that have been around and then also just delivered fantastic matches. Um, and it's a gimmick. There's a giant screen and there's a randomized thing. And, and he put like Deadpool in for, for one of the random people that could pop up. Right. Cause it's supposed to be like a lotto kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, much like the, much like the draft, it was a spin on the draft and that, that, that that randomizer thing they would they would. It also reminds me of a, there was a gimmick that uh, I think they still do it in Jukar where uh, if like there's an announced thing that can't make it for whatever reason or, or or there's an injury or something like that they'll do this thing where they'll pull names out of a hat and they'll randomly like list like like the most obscure name possible and then they would do a thing where like Bryce would like run to the back see if they were backstage and if they were not he would just run back out and say they were not here and they would just dr- keep drawing. Until like they would pick and <laughs> so they would like pull out like Razor Ramon and he was like eh, not here you know so well, they like did that. that once and uh, uh, where uh, they eventually drew Glacier and uh, everyone's like oh it's another one of the joke ones and then Glacier's music started playing and Glacier legitimately came out. I and love that. I love that. But that that promotion also um, you know just lives in the tongue in cheek like that you know that they can absolutely do that and go crazy like that you know um but that's great but i think that's the to me that's what i look for in the weird quirkiness you know uh the weird quirkiness and then also the holy crap that was fantastic you know um and 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 you know the different levels of it so totally wow on that note, let's say we talked a little bit about RWA coming up this weekend uh, in the in the Pittsburgh area, of course, uh, and of course that other show. Uh, check out SoCal Uncensored; they got a lot of stuff if you are in California. Um, so, uh, with that, um, I think I think it's all we got this week. I know it's kind of a short one, a little weird with the travel and everything, but we'll be back in studio next week. Uh, you can join the same bad time, and I believe Amy, it's going to be your turn <laughs> for the guest. Uh, so we'll we'll have that announced and everything here uh, in a little bit. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, uh, go find your indie wrestling, and yeah, go find it online. Go find it wherever Smart Mark Video, Indie Wrestling US, High Spots, some stuff that we're involved is is that. A lot of those as well. Uh, Eamon, anything else? Uh, uh, any what's what's this? What's the secret to finding good indie wrestling? <laughs> the secret of good finding good indie wrestling uh, would be to go to inspireprowrestling dot com. That's oh, a plug. Oh, there you go. Segue into a plug. Eamon Payton, Eamon two please on the Twitter inspireprowrestling dot com. Um, of course, Sorgatron at sorgatronmedia dot com and indiewrestling dot us. Thank you so much, everybody. And please support indie wrestling. Put a taste of the four Six, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sipping check Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com